evening all am i audible and visible yeah yes yes okay good evening ladies and gentlemen i warmly welcome you all to the 42nd talk of the inter society weekly webinar series today we're extremely delighted to have the renowned chemical scientist and former deputy director of vssc dr k n nandadas he will be giving us an insight into india's made in mars mission a unique accomplishment in science and technology on behalf of all the attendees present here with utmost honor and privilege i welcome you sir to the 42nd talk of the inter society weekly webinar series it is also my privilege to welcome s radha krishnan sir and ms akila gauri shankar as well i would also like to welcome the mc of our session Pida Fatima, who is doing a wonderful job. Last but not the least, I would like to welcome all the attendees. Over to Sir Radha Krishnan Sir to introduce the speaker. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Nisma. Good evening and good morning to other certain people outside uh, outside of our India. Let me first thank Mr. Harinder Lal, Chairman, Inter Society Weekly Webinar Series Committee Chair, Committee for giving me an opportunity to introduce the speaker of this to this August audience. I am also delighted. Dr. K. N. Nayan, an outstanding scientist from BSSC and a deputy director from BSSC ISRO, and former emeritus professor of Indian Institute of Space Science and Technology, popularly known as IAST Trivandrum. Born in 1946, he had his B.Sc. degree in chemistry from Marthoma College, Tiruvalla. Subsequently, he took his M.Sc. chemistry from Madras College, Ernakulam, and Ph.D. from University of Kerala. He had 40 years of experience in different capacities in BSSC, starting from propellant engineer and superannuated as deputy director of BSSC ISRO. Following are his achievements. He established the state of art of chemical characterization facility, made significant contribution for the development of various types of solid propellant, polymer, etc. Authored 196 publications in international journals, and to his credit. 28 national and international patents that's a very great thing and he has guided 28 phd scholars recently in 2020 he was ranked among the world's top 2% scientists by 2% scientists by stanford university usa he was recipient of the following awards isro performance excellence award in 2009 received from president of india Lifetime Achievement Award in 2013 and 2019, Nuts ITAS Award from Indian Analytical Society in 1987. He was the past president of Kerala Academy of Sciences, Society of Polymer Sciences, High Energy Materials Society. Also, he is a distinguished visiting professor Indian of Indian National Academy of Engineering in Kusach. Also, he is member of International Academy of Astronautics. This is all about our uh, our speaker today. Over to Mr. Nisma. Fatima, sorry, Faida, Faida. Uh, thank you, Radha Krishnan sir. Uh, so we had a really good introduction of uh, Ninan sir. We are really happy that we have you uh, with us to speak uh, today. And uh, now, sir, it's over to you for your address. Uh, we can just share your screen and start presenting as well. We'll be happy to see you, uh, to hear you. Uh, thank you, my old colleague, and also uh, president of our Pensioners Association, Mr. Radha Krishnan, for the nice words of introduction, and also introducing me to this uh, webinar program. <clears throat> I suppose I am audible to you. Am I? Uh, yes, yes, sir. You're audible. Yeah. Okay, good. I also thank Mr. Harindra Dal, the dynamic chairman of Inter Society Webinar Coordination Committee, for inviting me to deliver this lecture. I'm indeed delighted to note that this is the forty-second lecture. That means you have a record of forty-one webinar series, and also I am very happy. to know that unless people are interested genuinely in knowing about the latest trends it would not have sustained so long 
It's a privilege for me to address this highly enlightened audience of uh, different, uh, six different professional societies who are de deeply interested in various fields of science and technology. Ancient India, in fact, was uh, in the forefront in science and technology. I'm sure you would have heard about the first surgeon or astronomer Aryabhata or the unknown metallurgists who have made the iron pillar in Delhi. But in the modern science, which started, I should say, with the Galilean period, at least half a dozen countries have overtaken us in the areas of science and technology. Therefore, it's extremely rare for us to hear about something that we could do initially or for, or for the first time, which these countries couldn't do. Therefore, it's my privilege to tell you a story of an unparalleled achievement of India which these countries, or in fact, no other country could do. So I shall start sharing my presentation. Is it visible to you? It's visible to you, I hope so. Yes, sir. OK. So the, this is a great feat of achievement, which is achieved by ordinary scientists and engineers like you and me, who have passed out from our ordinary colleges. A feat about which every Indian can be proud of. That's what I am going to tell you today, the story of India's Mars orbital mission. I'm going to tell you a story which lasted 10 months and 21 days in about 45 minutes. And therefore, I request you to listen to me properly. At the end of the story, I'm very sure I can convince you that yes, we can because yes we did okay so why an unparalleled ac accomplishment you may ask if you look at the overall success rates of mars mission the spacecraft going flyby or orbiting or landing with or without rover the mission so far done the success rate has been less than 50 percent out of the 55 mission only 27 has been successful but the astounding thing is seen in the next slide where you see the history of the first attempt to mars you look at this there are six countries have attempted and all except india it was a failure in the first attempt even a veteran like ussr succeeded only in the 10th attempt. You may say that this was because they did it long, long ago. But look at our neighbor who did it very recently in comparison to India. That itself was a failure. So India is the only country in the world to succeed in the very first attempt and the only Asian country to Mars uh, reach a Martian orbit. I'm very certain if it was a, a open meeting, all of you would have clapped. You can clap at your home. I don't mind doing so. OK. So in my lecture, I am going to answer to you three questions. One is, why we went to Mars? How our spacecraft, Mangalyan, mean, meaning Mars craft, Mangal for Mars and Yan for craft. How our spacecraft went to Mars? And what are the lessons we learned from the Mars orbital mission? Not only the technical one, but for the general assimilation of all of us. 
So there was global interest in Mars from ancient times. For example, the name itself came from uh, the Roman god and many in India, I think even today, also afraid of Mars, there is what you call Chowa Dosham and whatnot. But then a more a better scientific understanding of Mars came with the uh, with the invention of telescopic image with the with the advent of telescopic image. Looking at that, people postulated that these type of crevices are due to rivers and canals in the past. And in fact, when I was a youngster, when, when I was in the schools, every day there would have been a story in the newspaper about some people seeing somebody moving around on the Mars. And there are civilizations in the Mars and so on. But today we have a better understanding thanks to the space exploration from the spacecraft which should go, go near Mars or land in the Mars. So these are the special features. This is a picture of uh, Mars and Earth, diameter of half of that of Earth, mass one tenth of that of Earth, and therefore the gravity one third of that of the Earth. One year is 687 days and one day of Earth day. And, and our, our days are more or less the same, only 40 minutes difference. The average, Mars is pretty cold. The average temperature is minus 63. Atmospheric pressure is 0 0.6 atmospheric pressure compared to one for the land, uh, for Earth. And uh, we have a clear understanding of the atmospheric constitution, more or less, at least for the major constituent, 96% of it is carbon dioxide. But Mars is very dry. There is no liquid water on its surface, even though there are some postulates which say that underground there is liquid water, salty water is there. However, there is 20 million cubic kilometers of ice plus solid carbon dioxide at the polar region, what you see here as a white patch. So the hypothesis is that about 3 billion years ago, Mars had liquid water on the surface and microbial life on it. But a bit more conclusive evidence of microbial life would come from methane gas in Mars because 90% of methane on Earth is produced by microbes. So methane can therefore indicate the presence of microbial life on Mars. In fact, some of the missions to NASA of NASA and European Space Agency have indicated the presence of parts per billion range of methane in Mars atmosphere. However, there has been no concordant results, no agreeable results among all the people concerned because of the very low percentage. So the, the search for uh, methane and through that the life in the primitive form continues so far as Mars exploration is concerned. So the however, there is a big challenge to go to Mars because of the enormous distance and the differential speed. There is about, you know, this is, a, this is the average distance of the orbit from the sun. There is about 80 million kilometers difference between, average difference between the two orbits. And the speed is also enormously different. So Mars mission is like a slingshot to a very fast moving object, which is millions of kilometers away. So the current global interest in Mars I will reiterate, one is to confirm the presence of methane and therefore life on Mars, to establish the location, amount and nature of water on Mars because that is needed for its settlement or, or going beyond Mars. Second one is exploration of rare minerals. It is projected that in 25 to 50 years, almost all the rare metals from Earth will disappear. Therefore, we have to explore and the nearest planet is, uh, is Mars, and Mars has a future habitat or intermediate station to distant planets. For example, if we find a better planet to live in a solar system away, then obviously at one stretch we can't go, so we have to have some intermediate planets. That is why people like Stephen Hawking said that human beings have to find new homes elsewhere in the universe because of global warming, nuclear war, or genetically engineered virus. Even our coronavirus is that or not, we don't know. So this is one of the great dream of human beings is terraforming. That means convert Mars from this 
structure to this structure and then you know make it settlement for example this is a visualized perception of spacex company of usa after 20 years this will be a mars settlement with rockets ready to go up and down and in fact they are, they have gone beyond just visualization they have in fact built a prototype of a 100 passenger capacity spaceship here and also a massive rocket called super heavy its combined mass is 5400 tons and its height is 120 meters and its maiden flight to mars is expected now in 2024 and crewed flight will be in 2027 preceding the settlement compared to this you know many others also or just to give you an idea many others have also came out with an idea like mars one in in holland who without any proper foundation or planning call for volunteers to go to mars and our poor girl she was selected and is disappointed because the company is wound up now so what i want to tell you especially the students is that your ambition is okay but it has to be followed up with proper planning and then proper foundations for that so india's current mission the objective is not that high what we plan is to develop technologies which are required for an interplanetary mission and after going after deciding to go there why not explore mars surface features and atmosphere using indigenous scientific instruments we have decided that we will have only indian made instruments because that will give us a lesson to learn in building a, a, you know instruments required for future interplanetary missions so let us see after having decided so let us now look at what are the elements for a mars mission first is you have to have a suitable launch vehicle then you have to design and realize which uh, suitable launch vehicle from the available ones because we have got launch vehicles then realize and de uh, design and realize the orbiter which is new design a trajectory to mars because we have not gone there earlier and deep space communication and navigation which is partially new because we have gone a short distance to the moon but but compared to that this is much more distant so isro's launch vehicles these pictures you would have seen you see these are two beginners in early 80s called slv3 and aslv but its payload capacity is very small in the low earth orbit but what we have used is the pslv which is an operational launch vehicle it has a capacity of putting 1.8 tons in the sun synchronous polar orbit or 1.4 tons in a geostationary transfer orbit like this from there it is taken to the geostationary orbit 36000 kilometers up using the spacecraft propulsion itself this is a highly reliable and cost effective one however if this was available gsl mark 2 people asked why not use gsl mark 2 which was available at that time which has got a capacity to ca carry 2.5 ton as against 1.4 ton the gto however for such missions we look at the most reliable ones at that time we had six flights out of which three were unsuccessful and therefore we decided to choose this but today if i were to make a choice i would go in for mark 3 because it has got a payload capacity of 4 tons in the geo stationary transfer orbit okay so we have chosen the launch vehicle what next next is design and realization of the mars orbiter which was done at ura space center in bangalore but the spacecraft unlike the other spacecraft what we have made so far it has totally autonomous features because the two way communication takes 24 minutes so so if something happens in the spacecraft we cannot wait for that much time to do so this is the spacecraft mangalyaan having a mass of 1.34 tons with 850 tons of liquid propellant stored why this liquid propellant for because it is needed to have fire two liquid engines in the mangalyaan which was made by the liquid propulsion system center that is for orbit racing attitude control and other maneuvering so there is a main engine this long uh, you know 
flame is from the main engine, which is a 440 Newton liquid apogee motor. And eight small thrusters, which are for steering uh, the spacecraft, uh, you know, they are uh, 22 Newton thrusters. The propellant used in Mangalyan was developed in my group, and it is oxidizer is mixed oxide of nitrogen. You know, 3% nitric oxide and 93% N2O4 and fuel is monomethyl hydrazine. Well, this is, uh, this, uh, this was developed under the dynamic able leadership of Mr. late Mr. Mark Group, handing over to Professor Yuar Rao, who is, who was the satellite uh, uh, project director at that time, later became chairman Isro. Behind him is Dr. Mutlayam, who was the director of this center. You know, at that time, we were handing over the propellant in a manana pata like thing. You no, know? this was a carboy in which we were handing over. But today, we are handing over in this type of huge vessels, uh, in this type of trucks. We have established our own plant in Magnergiri and operated by our own people. And we have established a plant outside. In fact, that is, that is one of ISRO's philosophy. If somebody outside can do to our quality requirement, we get it done outside under a secrecy agreement. This is done at Andhra Sugars Private Limited in Tanuku, Hyderabad. I mean, Tanuku in Andhra Pradesh. There are five measuring instruments on board of Mangalian. All of them were indigenously developed and made. And the total mass of the five equipment is to only 14 kilograms. A terrestrial type of those five instruments together would weigh something like 1.5 to 2 tons, almost 1,000 times this weight. So one is a methane sensor for measuring, uh, you know, uh, which is an infrared radiometer, then Lehman alpha photometer H2D2 ratio, and then a quadruple mass spectrometer for measuring the constituents in the upper atmosphere, and the infrared imaging spectrometer for surface combustion analysis, and of course, an inevitable part of a camera made, some made in Ahmedabad, some in Trivandrum, some in Bangalore, and so on. Okay, so we have the uh, uh, launch vehicle, we have the instrument, we have the spacecraft ready. Now, we have to go to Mars. This is done in three steps. One is, you have to leave the sphere of influence of the Earth, then cruise to Mars, and then enter to the Mars atmosphere. First, we will see leaving the sphere of influence of Earth and getting injected towards Mars. This was done on November 5, 2013, launched by PSLV into 250 by this 23,000 kilometers el elliptical orbit. I, I have indicated how much propellant was used for this initial step because that is overcoming the gravity of the Earth. Whereas all subsequent things have used less than 500 kilograms of the propellant. See, for example, there were, this was the original thing done by the PSLV. The remaining five orbit racing maneuvers, six orbit racing maneuvers, including final injection towards Mars, was done by the spacecraft propulsion, which used only 447 kilograms of the spacecraft propellant. Then, Next is to cruise to Mars with minimum energy propellant utilization. Because, <clears throat> because this is a pictorial representation of Sun, Earth, and Mars. In this configuration, the distance is minimum. However, enormous amount of energy or propellant is needed to travel this short distance against gravity. Whereas, if you go from Earth to Mars <clears throat> around the sun, which will obviously be a much longer route. In fact, once you are in the Earth orbit, uh, sorry, sun's orbit, no fuel is thereafter needed, provided you are in a stable orbit. Provided after you leave, you will meet Mars at the correct point, at the correct location. So the spacecraft was placed in an orbit, which is called a mo modified Hoffman transfer orbit. Because your engineers, I, I thought I will spend a minute on what is Hoffman transfer orbit. 
Hoffman transfer orbit, which was predicted by the brilliant German engineer, a scientist uh, about 1925, much before racing, uh, having a stable orbit around the Earth, is an elliptical tar uh, transfer orbit around the Earth. So, in that, if you increase the velocity tangentially, then the spacecraft will enter into this elliptical transfer orbit. And when it reach at this point, there is an apogee bond, burn again, increase the velocity tangentially, it will change over to the circular orbit. This is the mechanism of raising the orbit of an artificial satellite. Now let us see how to, go. but then only one condition is that the orbit as well as the central bodies are to be in the same plane. Now to reach Mars, we should have Earth at our leaving position and we should have Mars at the arrival position at the end of this transfer elliptical orbit around the sun. All should be at the same plane. But this required alignment happens only once in 26 months. That is why the critical, criticality of launch window. If you had missed that launch window, window in 2000, 40, 13, then we could have had to wait for another two years. That is why you would have seen that just prior launch of the Chinese were two years earlier than ours. Then we have to optimize the trajectory. No experiment is possible. So we have to do thousands of simulations on Earth to arrive at the optimized trajectory. I request your close attention to this because this tells us about the whole mission to Mars. So this is a situation PSLU has left it here, and this was the six orbit racing maneuvers. At point number one on November 30, the velocity of the spacecraft was increased tangentially to take it into an elliptical orbit around the sun from point number two, like this. Then the trajectory has to be so precise. At the time of leaving here, Mars is here. And then the calculation has to be so precise that by the time Mars come here, so Mars come here, our front also has to exactly reach there. Then only a random way is possible. So the calcul in fact, our calculation and the performance of our propulsion systems were so precise that only two minor orbit corrections using only 0.48 kg of propellant utilization were required in this entire travel. And the Mars also arrived at the same time at the same point. And the travel from two to three was 667 million kilometers, which has happened in 293 days. So at this point, we have to slow down our, our uh, spacecraft. Otherwise, it will continue again to go around the moon, sorry, around the sun. So what then read to Mars, that is the last phase. On reaching the sphere of influence of Mars, the velocity of Mangalian has to be very precisely, again, I repeat, very precisely reduced from its the then velocity of 22.1 kilometer per second to exactly 1.1000 kilometers per second to be captured by a predetermined Martian orbit. So the important question is, will the engine, which was on hibernation, virtually sleeping for 293 days in deep space environment. Will it work? Because it's such a complex engine, even our motorbike. Nowadays, many of you don't have a motorbike, at least a motor car. If you leave in your shed for a year and come back and try to start, it will not work. You have to take it to a workshop to make it start. So what about this engine? Will it work? So that was our main worry. So what we did was two things. One is that we did a lot of compatibility studies on ground, which shows that it is compatible. We have designed it such a way that it is compatible. But the proof of the pudding was in eating. And therefore, on T minus two days, we had a three, four seconds firing of the engine. And it gave exactly the expected results. And therefore, they, there was great confidence in the mission. So the major event on September 24th. At exactly at this time, this, you know how to reduce the velocity of the spacecraft? 
there is no breaking his fist. So what we do is we turn it 180 degrees is uh, and then again fire the engine. So it will be a, what we call a reverse firing and therefore the engine velocity will reduce. Okay, at, at this exactly at this time, the engine was fired for predetermined time of two for uh, two, 24 minutes and 14 seconds using about 248 kilogram of propellant. The velocity was reduced. See, look at this figure, 1.099 kilometer per second, which was within 0.1% of the target. So there, this was a near perfect performance of our propulsion system. So the spacecraft was then turned back to the normal position and exactly at 800, we had a confirmation of Mars orbit from Canberra. Okay, so see, look at this. This is uh, this shows a near perfect. I, I if, if it was possible for a scientist to call a perfect mission, I would have called it a perfect mission. But as you know, there is nothing perfect on uh, possible in any experiment. That is why I call it as a near perfect mission. This was our prediction. As again, this, this is what we got, and we had sufficient propellant quantity for more than one year of life. So this is the first color picture obtained from Mars, presented to our Prime Minister. And so India is now the first country in the world to reach the orbit in the very first attempt. Not only that, we have joined the elite group of three spacefaring nations, who are the only other three countries, USA, Russia, and Europe, who have reached Mars. Not only that, compared to them, this is the most cost-effective Mars mission to date. This is our cost, but compared to that, this is our cost. Compared to this, look at the other cost of other countries, Japan, Russia, China together, NASA, and European Agency. Not only we realized it in a record time of 15 months. All others, it was two and a half years to three years, but there was no secret. I will share the secret with you. There was no mantra behind this. It was because we had a PSLV vehicle ready for it. Had we had to have a vehicle prepared for this purpose, we would have also taken two and a half, three years of time. So it was uh, performed beyond the mission objective. Original mission objective was only six months in orbit. But today, not today, way back in September last year, it has already completed six years in orbit. And this was a picture taken of the Mars moon on uh, July 2020, showing that the, uh, the instruments are intact. So, my dear friends, this is a glorious example of so the quick and innovative and low-cost way of doing Mars, a major task by India. But then look at this cartoon, which came in New York Times, a space club and India, Indian with a cow knocking at the door. There was a lot of fury all over India, but in my mind, there was no fear. In fact, according to me, this is a compliment. Why I say this is a compliment? Because this shows that in spite of being backward, we have achieved it. So you don't have to be an elite by caste, creed, or color to do great things. You don't have to be a, a MITian. You don't have to be a Harvardian to do great things. That is what uh, we have shown. In fact, ISRO itself is a typical example. We had a very humble beginning, starting from a church building, which was our first laboratory, and a parsonage here, which was uh, the place where rockets were assembled. We were the last to enter the space arena compared to other spacefaring nations, and ours was purely a civilian program, whereas all others had military support from, for the program. In spite of that, we are top in utilizing space technology for societal application. This is because of the vision of a great visionary, Vikram Sarabhai, the founder and father of India's space program. Looking at these tiny rockets rising from Tumba, he had a vision going beyond indigenous sounding rocket to use space technology for the benefit of the common man which was reflected in his UN speech at Geneva in 1969, where we said, we must be second to none in application of advanced technologies like space technology to the real problems of man and society. 
this picture was incidentally a prized one of my prized possessions which was taken when dr sarabai inaugurated my laboratory in 1971 so i was a uh, 23 year old man i had a lot of hair and i should say that i was handsome also i suppose <laughs> this is dr sarabai who was uh, very handsome and magnetic personality at that time you know this our research and development activity on rocket propellants and chemical suppose we had a physical class i suppose all of you would have enjoyed this joke no okay about my handsomeness that's what i want to tell you so the, uh, the r&d on rocket propellants and chemical systems in isro commenced in a small asbestos building which we have preserved even now from here only all the propellants all the chemicals all the material systems were developed and evolved so from this humble beginning in today we have a very mature indian national space system of our own satellite satellite launch vehicles launch and tracking facilities and we are one among the five nations in the world having these capacities providing nationwide service in communication weather monitoring disaster management education health management of natural resources etc i don't have time neither the scope of the lecture is to give a detail but just to give an example telemedicine from aims in kochi 22 similar ones are there we can uh, the, the doctors can see patients in assam or or in or uh, karnikobar islands or in jammu and where not and fishing zone you know additional catch to our fishermen is worth 50000 crore worth of additional catch since we started the program of forecasting the potential fishing zone and then a value of life which is which cannot be weighed against any money 5 lakh people died in november in november uh, 12 1970 when the bola cyclone was there a cyclone of similar intensity last year year before last that toll was only 68 due to the time the warning so dr sarabhai vision became a reality through the vitality that the hard work with passion and perseverance of those who follow and the value of isro that is working together to realize a common national goal and not working for the personal glory so professor thawan was a typical example he followed him he materialized sarabhai's dream to build isro into a world class organization but despite our best efforts we had failures the maiden slv3 flight for which dr apj abdul kalam was the project director has a failure which was according to me it was the most disappointing failure of the science and technology history of india where every indian was expecting it to be a success but professor dawan showed us how to face the failure he shouldered the responsibility of failure to the newspaper and media and he instituted the mechanism of finding out solution to the problem today isro any problem the entire community owns the problem and find a solution to the problem i myself was chairman of failure analysis committee in chemical area for close to 10 years where we could we found the solution to chemical problem which has arisen anywhere in isro so it is not it is not their job the fellows job to find the solution but the whole solution whereas when it came to the uh, success the credit is shared with the people this is dr kalam sharing the results with uh, indira gandhi the prime minister at that time okay so this is his famous quotation due to paucity of time i don't read you can read yourself okay so this such a confidence only has arisen this gentleman who had otherwise gone to the deep disappointment of the failure to the first citizen of the country so he has watched himself by selling a confidence and hard work is the best medicine to kill disease called failure it will make you a successful person so this also give us courage to explore the unknown i mean just i i wanted to share my own one of my own examples 
the SLV3, you know, that what you have seen the uh, earlier vehicle. In 1976, there was a static test where the first stage nozzle failed. There was a big discussion. In ISRO, we discussed whole things. There was a big discussion because there was no facility available in the country to do a mapping of the thermophysical property of the nozzle material. There was a big discussion. Nothing is available in the country. Shall we send it to France or send it to USA? Who will do it? Then I was a, a young boy at that time sitting at one corner. I raised my hand and I said, then Professor Dhawan said, yes, I find a young fellow sitting there. What do you want? I said, sir, there is no need of sending it anywhere. I will do this. Then he consulted. Of course, it, he wanted to confirm that it's not a mere heroism. He consulted my boss as well as Dr. Kalam and he said, do it. So we have done, I'm happy to say that we were given 30 days and we did it in 28 days, four weeks, and we are showing this result to Professor Dhawan. Okay, my dear friends, that confidence and hard work enable us to overcome big setbacks also. For example, you know, in 1993, there was a cryogenic technology denial to ISRO. So we developed an indigenous cryogenic upper stage for which 40 specialty chemicals were developed in my group. And this is Dr. Kalam, we were explaining to him. And these are the small, it is not only a small chemical, but a 4.0 meter diameter, you know, a neoprene shield for the cryo tank and a special, uh, you know, polyamide, polypyromiltamide based pipe, which is the only pipe on earth, which can, without getting a brittle, uh, pump a liquid at 20 Kelvin. Okay, my dear friends, the vision, vitality, and values of ISRO became hallmark of ISRO in all areas of work. For example, this is Dr. Dr. Vasand Govarikar presenting a proposal to set up a huge uh, solid propellant plant, which has later come up with Sri Gotra. While we were struggling to make even a small 50 millimeter diameter motor that will work to Dr. Uh, our Prime Minister. Look at his confidence and his vision. So such confidence and mission only has resulted in us making the third largest solid booster in the world. This was our size of our boosters at that time. This a lab technician pouring the inhibition at the one end of the booster in 1969. But today, the same operation is done with three ericota, and this is the third largest solid booster in the world. Not only that, it is the third largest booster. It develops a thrust which is equivalent to uh, 13 numbers of the most powerful commercial aircraft engine fitted onto the jumbo jet firing together when it fires. So, my dear, especially the student community. The lesson what we have learned from ISRO's successful Mars orbital mission is that, yes, we can. You will succeed in your endeavor, whatever you have, if you have the following quality. One is have a dream and vision, have a proper plans and also confidence to achieve, have passion and perseverance to realize it with hard work, not defeated by setbacks, but learn from failures and improve upon. And uphold values in life. Success without value is valueless. So you should have value in life. You may think that some shortcut, I will succeed. No. For sustained life, you should have values in life. So vision, value, and vitality ensure victory to you. Why I am say with confidence is because, yes, we did it. Yes, we did it. This was our status when we started. Dr. Abdul, Abdul Kalam assembling along with his colleague, uh, Mr. Arvamudan, a payload. No laboratory table available, no lab desk available, squatting on the ground. Payload being carried on a bicycle. Our laboratory in a corridor in between two rooms. This is a chemical laboratory at that time. This was the first indigenously developed solid propel so, uh, 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 rocket being flown, five kilogram weighing. But today, when we launched our Mangalyan, we had this prestigious rocket, which has 51 consecutive successes in which we have flown 
328 foreign satellites. Look at this data, out of which 206 are American satellites. And on November 15, we launched it. I wanted to show you if uh, things come all right, the launch also. I hope it will come. Oh, yeah, it's coming. Good. <clears throat> that is the countdown, and this is the PSLV or on the flight path. It is right. It's, it is actually a GSLV on the flight path, which is going up, roaring up to the skies. So there will be always a clap in the in the. Okay. I suppose you have also clapped. Okay, so that's all. Thank you very much for your patience listening. I am through, so I will stop sharing and I am open for your question and answer session. And also you can uh, give about the lecture, ideas about the lecture also. Okay, thank you very much once again. So over to you. Fida, Fatima, and uh, Radha Krishna. Uh, thank you, sir. That was indeed really nice. Uh, and the presentation was also really nice. Uh, as uh, It was very interesting, sir. Uh, thank you so much. So we'll just move on to our question and answer session now. Yes, sir? Yeah, I am ready. <clears throat> I am ready. Yeah, OK. Uh, so uh, let me just go through the question. So, uh, So there are comments on uh, how inspiring the talk is. So that's really nice. Uh, so at present, uh, there are uh, no uh, like there are no much questions in the chat box. So I request everyone, if you have any questions, please do post because uh, it's really a pleasure to have uh, an answer with us. So it'll be really nice if you can post uh, your questions. So um, we have comments on. Uh, the how inspiring, as I said, how inspiring the talk is. Uh, even though, like, you, even though you've mentioned, uh, you, you have mentioned the failures that uh, when you uh, that that uh, went uh, that that was there throughout the mission. You uh, you mentioned uh, the ups and downs. You mentioned everything. That was uh, really nice. That gives us a sense of uh, determination and passion to uh, work to what we like. So that is really nice, sir. Thank you so much. So if you don't uh, have any question. Yes, sir. We have questions. Uh, do uh, from I I find one question from uh, Praveen Jayaman. Do we have a plan to? Yes, sir. So we have a question. Hello, sir. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah I can hear. You. Okay, we have questions. I was just waiting for the questions to come. So. Do we have a plan to explore materials from Moon or Mars? Uh, so that's one question we have. Yeah, of course. Not only we, the whole world has a plan. As I told you earlier, those who are studying mechanical engineering and metallurgy, you know that the rare minerals, including even cobalt, nickel, all those things at the present rate of consumption will disappear from Earth after about 25 to 50 years of time. Not only really that, there are rare minerals. Just as when you go to some town, you go to Bima Jewelry to see whether there is a, any worthwhile buying gold is there. So people will definitely explore if there are costly metals are there, minerals are there. So there are two purposes. One is mineral exploration. And in the case of moon, there is a very rare thing which is maybe explored later on, what is called helium-3, which is there in abundance on the moon. So these are the type of uh, minerals are there. Uh, okay. I suppose the answer is clear to you. There are plants, in other words, not only for India, but all, all the space, 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 space bearing nation. But the limitation now is the enormous cost. Because to bring a kilogram of gold from, say, moon to earth, it, at the present way of going to moon and earth for exclusively for this purpose will cost something like 1,000 crores. Okay. <laughs> I mean, 500 crores at least. So 
when it become so the effort is going on everywhere in the world to make more affordable launch vehicles where you can have multiple missions in the same same vehicle see we can go to mars make a settlement there and then bring back some you know. so that is why i expect that this become a commercial venture only after about 25 years when i will not be there on earth but some of you guys like fatima maybe one of the in that project no where you go to uh, the mars and bring some minerals okay what is the next question yes another question that we have is uh, when the mars will be available for tourism <laughs> oh, sorry i didn't hear you when mars will be available for tourism that is another question okay, mars tour right now you see poor girl like you what was her name i showed her name you know yes yes uh, I, uh, yeah uh, sorry i at my age i forget what was the name you know one girl who was in yeah we saw uh, her picture a lovely yeah. girl no she yeah. was from uh, coimbatore uh, amrdananda institute she competed with uh, 28000 people in the world Uh, online and she was shortlisted one among hundred so that was like a tourism so to go to mars and come back free of cost but poor <laughs> poor girl she was ditched ana eduthalu aasha kodukirana there is a saying you know so like, like that however the spacex mission is a reality it is a, a real stuff so 2000 Uh, 30 onward 27 onwards 27 onwards there will be uh, some short tour initially on a lower orbit but probably for people like you you can have honeymoon in the moon <laughs> okay so there may be a reality moon may be a difficult profession because there is no atmosphere there and gravity is also maybe mars may be a little better than that moon. so it is it is to Uh, it is not only really that okay there is another question i saw some guy has asked i have seen that question asked about training the people very good question because we can't go to more mars without getting properly trained because there you know the gravity as i have shown earlier is only one third greater that of the earth on the mars so you have to have uh, you have to train yourself to live in that gravity condition gravity we cannot change whereas atmosphere we can create artificial you know i thought some uh, some nice guy will ask me a question as what is that uh, uh, space x plan of how to make it what is called habitable mass earth nobody has asked so i will ask myself and give you that <laughs> okay that is what is called terraforming i have shown you half the mars a gray color and how the mars like like earth so what the elon musk is a really fantastic man with great vision like our sharaba is what he is planning i will tell you he will have a nuclear blast on top of the polar region of the mars okay so what will happen i have told you there is a 25 uh, 21 million cubic meet kilometers of water and ice on that polar region that white patch you have seen no so that will vaporize whole thing will vaporize because of a couple of blasts and it will cover the entire martian atmosphere so what happens is martian temperature will go because carbon dioxide and water both are fantastic greenhouse gases temperature will go and then that water will condense and you will get liquid water so these are the type of plan i think fellows like you should plan for this you should think something extraordinary if you think ordinary <laughs> nothing will come through at our young age we used to do that you know as I, as you know from maharaja's college and i came i have not seen anything other than a bureau but then we think we thought about along with great people like dr Uh, Gowariker, Dr. Sharabai, Dr. Muthumai, all those people. We also started imagining great things. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, uh, next question. And, uh, yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. But it's nice hearing to you talk like this. So it's it's like a motivation for us, sir. <laughs> yeah. So another question: uh, When India is planning the next Mars mission? Answer is I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe another. Uh, you know, next priority is uh, next uh, Chandrayaan mission. Okay. And then we have a Gaganyaan mission. So in between, definitely in between that, there will be a Mars mission. But the date and day, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Another question, uh, why the rocket rolls, rolls after the launch? Not all the rockets launch, only small rockets launch. Uh, launch. That is... Uh, that, that is uh, spinning the rocket gives it stability. As you know, if there is any non uniformity in the CG, is there that will get offset. But the rocket is intentionally rolled uh, using some thrusters to make it stable. Otherwise, it doesn't roll by itself. Only the small ones, sounding rockets, have a roll. Okay. Uh, so we have another question from uh, Dr. Anand Parnikar. Any of your patents came to be used in the Mars mission? Well, that's a very good question. Mr. Parnikar, I can see him also. See, the, normally a patenting is supposed to be for gaining the money out of that, commercial level. But in ISRO, 90% of our patenting is what is called a defensive patenting. Let me explain to you that. Today, when we started doing it is that, we found that in the late 80s, we saw a couple of US patent in India for some of the rocket parts. You know, their intention was, once they file an Indian patent, then they can say, you can't do it. You are infringing your patent if you don't follow any such thing. So we started patenting many of our things, which are as defensive patent. Whereas there are two products which uh, for which I have filed a US patent as well as an American patent that is an advanced oxidizer called ammonium dinitramide for soil propellant and the advanced binder called glycerated acid polymer. Because we expect that that will be the propellant system after 20 years. So at that time, there will be a demand from globally. So somebody should not uh, flee us. That is why we have it. See, this uh, answering Mr. Panikar's question, see the propellant system, liquid propellant system, one of the chemical has been patented by us. It's process. Okay. What is the next question? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, next question. Uh, are we innovating on uh, space suits to uh, simplify? Sorry, I didn't get that. Are we innovating on space suits uh, to simplify? Space? Suits, space. Space suits. Okay, okay. Space suits. We are okay. making space suits. You know, that program has already started. The, the, that was again in our chemical group only. It's a seven layer suit on which there will be, you know, your, uh, uh, you have to have your sweat absorbed. At the same time, it should have radiation resistance, including particulate, neutron radiation resistance and so on. It is under development that is wrong. Yes, sir. Uh, another question from uh, Venkateshan Narayanan. Recently, we read about a rocket launch from uh, Boeing uh, 747. Can you place it in uh, perspective in the race for space exploration? Yeah, that is what is called aircraft to assist the launch. You know, you would have seen earlier my own example of going to Mars. 95% or even 99% of the fuel, fuel within inverted comma, actually it's not fuel, it's the propellant, is to overcome the earth gravity by the launch vehicle. So an aid to that, to give the initial impulse from a spacecraft, keep it on a spacecraft, uh, sorry, aircraft, sorry, what I meant to keep it on a aircraft uh, launch, and then Take it to use that as a, uh, you know, to carry the rocket, get it at least one or uh, 0.7, 0.8 or one or 1.5 Mach number of that particular 
uh, a particular Boeing, and then from there leave it to the rocket. So it's a delta V equation, you know. So the, the initial delta V from zero, you get uh, the velocity of the uh, of the aircraft. So that is an idea, but only problem is that can be used only for a small rocket. For example, look at our GSLV Mark III. Its present mass is 640 tons. With that weight, or 2,000 tons is one space jet. Or look at our uh, front uh, uh, SpaceX uh, launch, it is 5,400 tons. No, no aircraft will <laughs> rise up from the Earth with that with that uh, weight, no? So only small rockets, small rockets can be. But if you have a huge one, one great advantage, that's a very intelligent question. One great advantage of such a system is that we can reuse them. We can reuse that aircraft after leaving it, it can come back and then reuse it. Okay, a good idea. I think, guy who was asked me that question? Uh, that was a question from Venkateshan Arayanan. Venkateshan uh, Arayanan, I think you work on it on a theoretical paper. Give it to Isro. I mean, this this idea was in air even when I joined Isro. That was in 1968. But then it has to be made viable uh, for me. Okay, next question. Thank you, sir. Uh, another question uh, is from uh, Zahir Bashir. So he's, he has congratulated you on your personal achievements and contributions to and ISRO's attainments as well. Thank and you. his question is, uh, what is the secret of ISRO's success that can be transferred to other institutions in India which are not so successful? Is it the strict meritocracy? So I think my last but one slide, I don't have time to show you that. Do you remember that slide? Secret of Israel's success. Have a vision. Have a vitality. Work for that. Not deterred by failures. Learn from your failures. Don't give up. And most importantly, in an organization, work for a cause. Not work for you. Incidentally, I want to tell you that all my publications, I have never worked for those publications. It was incidental. It was done for the students. So work for a cause. Work for a, in, the, in, in a place, if 100 fellows are there, they work for 150 objectives. Nothing will come through. We have a... Uh, yet another reason of our success is we have a, a what you call a transparent system. Suppose Radhakrishnan comes up with a design of a liquid engine. He cannot say, I have done a fantastic thing, it will work, I am from MIT, I am from Caltech, or I am from Chandran, or whatever is there, nothing will work in Israel. It has to undergo a review of all. Everybody's wisdom will go. Similarly, as I told you about a failure, I was chairing, I was instantly, I was the chairman of the design review team for 10 years for solar propulsion area. Similarly, I was chairman of the failure analysis committee for 10 years. Suppose, uh, you know, Fatima, you make a mistake. It is not your responsibility to find a solution for the mistake. So the community joins together in finding a solution. So the community does the design, review, the community does the uh, failure analysis, the community is behind you and, and the entire community works for a goal. So anywhere in the world, if anybody can work like this, there cannot be any failure. So this is the great thing which was evolved by great people like Dr. Sarabhai, followed by uh, Dr. Professor Thaman. They have set the ball uh, rolling and now things will go, unless some guys will come try to spoil the whole thing. <laughs> okay. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, another question from uh, Zahir Rashid. To go to Mars or Moon, etc., it is not only the energy bar. People have to be trained to experience gravity changes, etc. So is this not going to be a bar? It is never going to be like traveling by plane, right? So, yeah. 
yeah i have i think partly i have seen his question earlier and i have answered it partly so we are setting up what is called the microgravity facilities in the country to train our gagandian travelers so the easiest you know a short duration microgravity if you have a parabolic flight no when the flight comes down you get a, but that type of a situations are simulated for long so there is what is called see our gaganyam uh, gaganyam means india's i suppose you know india's manned mission three crew have been selected and they have been trained for one year at uh, uh, soviet union uh, soviet union uh, space uh, station agency for overcoming the for facing the microgravity conditions so one of our friends one another radhakrishnan what was his initial kera kera krishna we used to call him as tadira <laughs> no he has he was trained in uh, i think he was to go in one of the uh, space shuttles but in between some tragedy uh, yes yes indeed it needs uh, training not only to go to the um, in the spaceship but even to settle down on conditions other than that of the earth uh, the, the 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 biggest training is needed in terms of the uh, gravity difference conditions okay but one good thing is uh, you see i can compete with uh, fatima and win in high jump if i go there no <laughs> <laughs> do you agree or not <laughs> yes sir <laughs> and uh, so we we'll just move to the you i should i will compare your jump from on the earth to my jump on the uh, <laughs> moon <laughs> yes. so uh, actually even though in the beginning we had a slight delay of questions now we have a lot of questions to answer <laughs> so uh, i think i think yeah. uh, i am okay but then it is getting late i think i leave it to you Yeah, we'll just go on with a few more questions because the questions are also really interesting. So if you are fine, we'll just move on with some more questions. Yeah, yeah I'm okay. I'm. I see. I am a seventy-five-year-old man, but I don't mind you know, <laughs> being on the floor with the guys like you. It's always I feel young. Okay. Tell me. Yes. Uh, another question from uh, Hari Hari. An under RS two uh, thousand obstruction sensing warning and avoidance system. for use in vehicles on high speed highways and uh, reduce accidents considerably it is a long complicated question i didn't get to you <laughs> yes i'll just repeat it once more can we develop uh, an under rs 2000 obstruction sensing warning and avoidance system for uh, use in uh, vehicles on high speed high highways and uh, oh, yeah. uh, i i got it i got it yeah yeah, yeah. that is ultimate aim you know you are you are uh, you are driverless car all those things uh, go by that and we should have a, we should have a control that is by a automated system from within but then we should have a control from some police station or somewhere where we can intervene also that will be a good thing so for all these things the prime requirement is to have low cost access to space right now It's almost uh, 2,500 rupees a kilogram of the satellite weight to reach. If you can bring down to 2,000 US dollar, because the fund is always to say in US dollar, no. So if we can have something like 100,000 rupees, I mean not 1,000, 10,000 rupees or so, then many other things. Already we have done space medicine. sitting at amrathanam mai institute in uh, kochi a doctor can see a patient in uh, assam so like that all 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 vehicles all those things can be ultimately that should be our ultimate aim okay yes sir. another question from uh, lakshmi is isro planning for a reusable uh, rocket like falcon 9 yeah yeah yeah, yeah. in fact rlv technology demonstrator that means you know before going into the actual stuff we do what is called a technology demonstrator 
early technology demonstrated was uh, uh, I, let me put it about eight about um, 10 years ago 10 or 12 years ago it was flown also see there are two types of reusable launch vehicle it was a good question so i will take a couple of minutes to answer that one is called two stage to rock uh, to uh, two stage to orbit that means the first stage or a part of the stage is expanded and a part will come back like your space shuttle but to have a full fully reusable launch vehicle it's a ideal thing but we should have some fantastic materials which are lightweight which understand the re-entry temperature conditions so it's a, and we should have some propulsion system which are till till now th not thought of so the fully reusable launch vehicle is the ultimate dream of all space faring nations and i hope that some of the young engineers who are sitting here students who are sitting here Will be a, will be a party to that, but two stage to orbit is already ISRO is planning to, you know, for that. The full stage, like an aircraft to fly, go up and then come down, is something which would have been the most ideal. Something which is very close to that is the one which is planned by the SpaceX, Elon Musk. Okay. Yes, sir. Another question. In your lecture, you mentioned that uh, reaching the orbit was confirmed by Canberra. What is the meaning? Uh, yeah. Canberra means it is a, it is a place in Australia. Yeah. So when it, when it came, I suppose you can see my hand. You know, when it came up, first vision was from Australia. That's all. You know, it has to come in your radar, no? So it came first at the site in, Can in Canberra. Within a couple of minutes, it was available in India also. That's all. About it. And it, oh. it also gave us, another, on a later way, it gave us another uh, credibility. Because we said that our Bangalore has found it out. 50% of the fellows would have written yesterday, oh, it was all <laughs> faked up, no. <laughs> No, that was, <laughs> it has come in Canberra's camera, everybody. <laughs> yes, so, so another question, we'll just move on fast because uh, time is also going. So last question, sir. What was your most memorable or exciting moment in space exploration? That is the most difficult question to answer because for the 40 days I have spent, 40 years I have spent in ISRO, every day was exciting to me, truly. Eh? Except a few days where I was very much down, where we failed in our missions and our objective. Whatever is the result we got. For example, a couple of things I will tell you. When the first tiny rocket, weighing seven kilograms, flew up just uh, five months after I joined this road. That was in 1968, not five months, one year, two months after I joined this road. That was a very memorable. But personally, the most memorable event for me was, I was given a task as a young boy. I was just 22 year old at that time to set up a laboratory. A small lab, but I took it as a great challenge, and I set up uh, one of the uh, one of the best laboratory in the whole continent uh, in, in the laboratory. So when in our beginning stage, Dr. Sharabai came personally. That picture you have seen, no? Do you agree that I was a smart guy at that time? You see, <laughs> you know. So. <laughs> That's a little bit of hair. That is what I meant. You have seen the picture, no? So yeah, when yes. Sarabai came there, that was a memorable occasion. So when our first, you see, there are like that, there are hundreds of things I can tell you. For example, in the liquid engine where our radar engine is working, there was a failure. I was put as the failure analysis committee chairman to do that. Each test could have cost some five, five crores. 
our committee found a solution and when it was tested again when it was successful test it was a great a great excitement for me so like that i was not uh, telling in a later vein but it was true that about I, i i should say that at least one third of my life in israel every day was exciting thrilling And, yes uh, <laughs> yes sir. so that's with the question sir and uh, from from the way you speak we can understand how excited you was uh, and how happy you are with your uh, profession and uh, about what you do you are really happy with it and it really reflects to our side also sir even though it is uh, you know online uh, platform so it would it would be really nice to meet you in person as well uh, it's going to be really nice sir and uh, So uh so that's with the question answer session that we had so now uh, as we come to an end of our uh, event i would like to request akila gauri shankar of project management institute to uh, give the word of thanks can we have you uh, ma'am yes dear thank you so much well all will agree that it was a wonderful experience actually he took us along with him uh, and i think we were he was reliving with us also taking us through the mars uh, missions and all that i sure everyone will agree with me on that so that was a great program the 42nd one from our society into eclipse society series the india's maiden mars orbiter mission yes it is a unique accomplishment and a proud moment for all of us thank you professor nine and sir for your time and um, uh, the visionaries that has worked in and brought us laurels thank you so much sir for taking us through all those uh, great moments and uh, the way you are answering the questions so there also you are actually getting us into all those uh, uh, Oh, uh, super moments! Thank you so much, sir. And uh, yes, thank you so much, Fida, for the uh, great MC for the session uh, for today's session, and Miss Nesma for the welcome session, and Doc and as Radha Krishnan sir for the introduction of the speaker. I am really privileged that and honored to give this vote of thanks on behalf of. all the seven societies that comprise this uh, weekly webinar series that put up this weekly webinar series for all so thank you everyone from the organizers of ieee kerala section the institute of engineers india kerala state center iei computer society of india trivandrum chapter csi the project management institute kerala chapter pmi inter society trivandrum cha- chapter isoc the vikram maulavi foundation trust Trivandrum and the IEEE Engineering in Medicine Biology Kerala Center EMBS and yes my vote of thanks won't be complete if I don't acknowledge the great participants who very actively participated in this session. Thank you all participants and we look forward to your joining next week and the details which will be said by Fida shortly. Thank you. Yes. Uh thank you Akila ma'am and uh, Nenan sir thank you so much for coming. I'm really happy to uh, meet you. <laughs> so so obviously the others will also be happy to meet you as well and we had a huge number of questions as I said even though we had a slight delay in the first that questions are coming like everything and people also get really uh, interested with your 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 excitement is so in, uh, infectious to us also. It gives kind of a spirit to work further on uh, anything that uh, we are interested in sir thank you so much sir and uh, so now uh, we have come to end ask for, for me one minute ask yes. for me i thoroughly enjoyed even though it was uh, interesting for me to speak continuously for uh, almost one hour 15 minutes it was a little tough but then it i thoroughly enjoyed when, once you enjoy a thing it uh, tiredness will come uh, can very <laughs> okay incidentally if uh, any of you uh, see like later on if things are okay suppose your college or somebody would like to hear this lecture i i can always do that yes sir of course uh, yes sir 
uh, we would connect to you, sir. Uh, in such cases, we would we will be happy to connect to you, sir. <laughs> thank you so much, sir. Okay. So, okay. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. So now, uh, as we've come to an end of our event, uh, I would like to I would like to uh, announce announce our uh, next session as well. So can we have the presentation of our next session? Uh, so I will just uh, mention it. Uh, so the presentation is uh, not yet up, so I'll just mention it. So as we have come, uh, this is our 40th session and for 42nd session, and we have come to an end of our 42nd session, uh, which is organized by IEEE Kerala section, the Institution of Engineers, Kerala State Center, Computer Society of India, Trivandrum Chapter, Project Management Institute, Kerala Chapter, Internet Society, Trivandrum Chapter, Welcome Foundation, Trust Trivandrum, and IEEE Engineering in Medicine and Biology, Kerala Chapter. So this next session that we have is our uh, 43rd session. And uh, our 43rd session uh, will be on Green Energy Initiative of uh, CIAL, uh, CL, and it is by A. Chandra Kumar, Director, Cochin International Airport Limited. It is on the 3rd Feb, uh, February 2021 uh, from 6 p.m. Uh, 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. Wednesday. And uh, hopefully uh, we would like to uh, meet all of you again uh, on our third uh, session as well. So, Nina, so once again, thank you so much. Uh, we would like to connect with you. So, uh, probably through Harindala, sir, we'll connect with you, sir. And thank you so much. And we would be happy to meet you again. Uh, so, once again, thank you to all the attendees uh, for your active participation. It was really nice to have everyone interacting today. And once again, thank you, Ratha Krishnan, sir, Akhila, ma'am, Nesma. Thank you, everyone. And yeah, that's also, uh, we've come to the end of our meeting. So,